to continue a question that I asked the government uh, last uh, a week Monday on the Beaufort Sea and the the uh, border dispute between Canada and the United States. This border dispute started in, 19, in the 70s when the U.S. decided that the historical boundary on the longitudinal line between Alaska and the Yukon was not appropriate and the appropriate boundary was the perpendicular line to the coastline. That's, that has meant that the U.S. has had a claim on, uh, or projected a claim on some 21,000 square kilometers of Canadian territorial waters in the Beaufort Sea. Now, Mr. Speaker, in August, the U.S. imposed a moratorium on that commercial fishing in the waters around Alaska, including the portion of the Beaufort claimed by Canada. This, uh, this uh, movement was uh, responded to by Canada with a diplomatic note. Uh, but in the meantime, we see that the uh, U.S. has now entered into a planning process for the development of oil and natural gas uh, drilling in the Beaufort Sea uh, to the boundary that they have established for Canada. Uh -oh. So what we see is that we see Alaska oil industry regulators have cleared, cleared the way for a series of lease sales over the next decade along a vast swath, swath of coastal waters in the Beaufort Sea. Uh, it supports uh, annual area-wide lease sales planned for the, from this year through 2018 across about 2 million acres near shore waters and islands stretching from the Barrow East to the Canadian border that the U.S. has decided is now uh, the, the correct place. The U.S. leaves off, the, the U.S. of course in terms of, of outer continental shelf uh, oil and gas leasing take, the federal government takes responsibility for that and they have uh, plan. They are planning for more extensive leasing in in waters further off the coast. The lifting in 2008 of a moratorium over over drilling in the Beaufort Sea has allowed the U.S. to do this in its waters and in the waters that it that it now claims from Canada. My question, of course, was what's the government's response to this provocation? You know what I see in a speech from yesterday for uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, talked about uh, Canada's role as an energy superpower. He says our government does and always will stand up for our interests and ownership over the Arctic. He said uh, as well, we will respond appropriately when other nations push the envelope when it comes to Canada's Arctic. But he returned again and again to the issue of sovereignty assuring the audience that the government would act firmly against other nations who fail to respect the border. Canada is in control of its Arctic waters and takes its responsibilities very seriously. My question remains to the government. What are we going to do about this provocation by the United States? Parliament Secretary, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member for bringing this very important issue up uh, out here. He has quoted the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, who said yesterday at the Empress Club exactly what the, uh, what, what the member said, uh, which is very simple, that Canada is ready to defend its Arctic border against nations that would push the envelope. That is very clear. In no uncertain terms, it has been made very clear that the Arctic is Canada's sovereign uh, uh, place. Canada has repeatedly made clear that the lands of the Canadian Arctic are Canadian and that the waters of the Canadian Arctic are the internal waters of Canada. The land and water of Canadian Arctic are our sovereign territory by virtue of historic title and we will exercise our sovereignty over them. Canada is taking action in the north to benefit northerns who are at the heart of Canada's Arctic foreign policy and our northern strategy. Now, Mr. Speaker, uh, let me just say this to the honourable member who raised this question. There is no question, as far as we are concerned, about the issue of the sovereignty on the Arctic. Now, he has raised some questions. There are certain disputes that are coming out, and there are three well-managed disputes out there. But those are disputes that are well-managed, and we'll continue talking with them. But it should be made absolutely no, uh, very clear, in no uncertain terms, that the Arctic is 
is is Canadian territory, period, and the waters of the Canadian Arctic are belong to our internal water of Canada. The Prime Minister has gone out there to the Arctic Commission. We have invested very, very heavily to ensure that our sovereignty in that that part of the world is well established by 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 by, by investing in coast guards, by investing in stations, by investing in ranges out there. But it's, it's, it's very clear to understand that what happens in those those areas is the only nation on the earth that can actually look after the protection of the environment of, of all other resources are the Canadians. And so so that having been said that we must also ensure that we work with our partners. Partners that are nothing in this world is 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 by itself. So the best solution we have is working with our partners like the US, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Russia, Sweden and Finland. We have the Arctic Council. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has been to the Arctic Council many times. We continue talking with them. And we'll continue being engaged with them in order to ensure that that part of the world remains peaceful, calm, as well as uh, 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 for the benefit of, of everyone. But let it be very clear, there is no question about any ambiguity or anything that those are, Can are is the Canadian uh, Arctic is Canadian territory and the water of the Canadian Arctic are the internal waters of Canada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for Western Arctic. Well, Mr. Speaker, and, and you know, I, I share those sentiments about the waters, but what is happening here is the U.S. has moved from taking a position on setting a moratorium over fishing, in other words, taking, taking control of the environmental issues within the disputed areas, to now taking uh, a program of planning for drilling, in other words, taking over the jurisdiction for the economic use of that area. Now, Mr. Speaker, when this matter, which this matter will eventually end up in a court, uh, perhaps a world court for the dispute uh, resolution, Canada will be in a weaker position because we have allowed the U.S. to move forward with jurisdictional action in a disputed area, which will lead us, perhaps, to uh, a, a decision by a world court which would not be in our favor. I'm asking the government, what are you doing today to ensure that this... The uh, Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, I would like to advise my Honourable Member that in May 2008, at Ilu, Ilusat in Greenland, the representatives of the five coastal states of the Arctic Ocean, which is Canada, Denmark, Norway, the Russian Federation, and the United States, recall the extensive international legal framework which applies to the Arctic Ocean. It is these laws referred to in the EU SAT declaration that serves as the basis of our cooperation in the Arctic and speak to the unquestioned nature of our sovereignty in the North, Mr. Speaker. Rather than challenges in the Arctic, Canada cooperates with these Arctic partners on issues of environmental protection, shipping standards, search rescue, and the collection of scientific data concerning the continental shelf. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I will simply say that we are cooperating with all, all, all states around the Arctic Ocean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.